coming back. All right, let's continue uh, from where we left off the section whose name is Holy, page 18 in your PDFs. Um, right, his name is Holy, his name is to be hallowed. Uh, part of our worship is to give thanks, to bless, to glory, to make our boast, and to exalt and magnify his holy name. We hold it with reverence and honor on our lips. We speak it with faith and confidence, knowing the greatest that is in that name the greatness that is in that name. Right? We speak with faith and confidence, knowing the greatness that is in that name. Right? We have to treat it with utmost respect and reverence and honor. Uh, Luke 1 verse 49 in Mary's song, she says, For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Holy is his name. And we, um, we know this scripture that says, Thou shalt not take, saying, Thou, <laughs> Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. In Exodus 20, verse 7. Um, and in Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 20 to 23. We see that the people of that, that day and age, they profaned the name of the Lord. So it says, when they came to the nations, wherever they went, they profaned my holy name. What did they do? They profaned the, my holy name. Okay, so look at that uh, Hebrew word there for profane. We'll look at it in just a minute. Right? Chalal or chalel. Chal. Yeah, uh, it's too slow. Uh, everything is full over here. Probably ask him to increase his volume. Because I didn't, we didn't change anything here. If it was fine in the last section, it should be fine. Okay, so they profaned my holy name when they said to them, these are the people of the Lord, and yet they have gone out of his land. But I had concern for my holy name. God is saying, I had concern for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations wherever they went. Ezekiel 39, verse 7 and verse 25 says, So I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people, Israel. Let me say that one more time. I will make my holy name known in the midst of my people, Israel, and I will not let them profane my holy name anymore. Okay, so now the Hebrew word for profane or chalel, it simply means wounded or pierced through wounded or pierced through. So like it says in Isaiah 53 verse 3, right? He was wounded for our transgression. That's the same word that is used. So when God is saying in Ezekiel, when I say they profaned my name, that means they wounded my name. That they pierced it. Like how he was pierced. They made a puncture or like a hole or damage. They caused damage to his name. That's what it simply means to profane his name. And, uh, and it says, but I took concern for my holy name. I mean, he takes his name very seriously, right? And I've shared the story of uh, Acts 9.15, where Je uh, Jesus chose Saul, Apostle Paul, to ca carry his name, to bear his name. You remember that, right? right? Um, I have chosen him to bear my name or to carry my name. In Acts chapter 9, verse 15, uh, Jesus tells Ananias when he, to go and anoint uh, Paul. Um, and similarly, you and I have been chosen 
by God to carry his name. Right? And Ezekiel 43, verse 7. Let's uh, can someone read that just for or let me see if I can get it quickly for us. Ezekiel 43, verse 7, it says, um, and he said to me, Son of man, this is the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet where I will dwell in the midst of the people of Israel forever and the house of Israel shall no more defile my holy name. The house of Israel shall no more defile my holy name. So he dwells. He dwells where his name is holy, right? Where his name is hallowed and where his name is revered. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, Jesus says, Whoever is gathered, two or three are gathered in, if two or three are gathered in my name, I am in their midst. That means I will dwell in their midst. I will come down. Why? Because my name is holy. And if you're, if you're gathering in, in a name that is holy, which is my name, I'm, I am there. Right? Right now, we are gathered together in the name of Jesus. Is it? The name of Jesus is not just another way to end a prayer. Oh, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Lord Jesus bless his food and come in. Right? His name is not just another way to just end a prayer. It's much more. Okay, can we go a list a little deeper? How do we regard God's name? Do we see his name as holy? That's a question for you. you can answer that. Okay. Um, let's move on to the next section. God has spoken in his holiness. God has spoken in his holiness. Uh, Psalm 60 verse 6. God has spoken in his holiness. I will rejoice. I will devise Shechem and measure out the valley of Sukkot. So because he has spoken, there is a sense of rejoicing. Uh, in, in the last month, in January, there's a sermon uh, which uh, we did called Taking God at His Word. Taking God at His Word. Uh, that means one of the points was that God cannot lie. Or God is not man that you should lie. We know that scripture, right? God is not man that he should lie. Uh, one more scripture. Um, it's... Titus chapter 1 verse 2. <clears throat> Titus verse 1. Is it Titus? Sorry, guys. Give me a second. Yeah, verse 2. In hope of eternal life, which God who never lies. Let me read the uh, CEV version. Or let me read it, ASV version. Uh, in hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised before times eternal. Um, so that's another scripture. So we say that God cannot lie. He, he, he doesn't say that God does not lie says that he cannot lie. Okay, let's pause. And when we say that he is holy, uh, we are not saying that God does not sin. We are saying that God cannot sin. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it is not in his capacity or in his ability to sin. Are you with me? Okay, um, so once, Psalm 89 verse 35, it says, Once I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. Why does he have to bring in holiness and lie? But it's what it is. Right? Once I have sworn by my holiness, I will not lie to David. And Psalm 108 verse 7 says, God has spoken in his holiness.
man shall not live by bread alone, but but every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father, right? That means you and I are alive because he speaks. You and I are alive and breathing right now, this moment, because he is speaking. And he is and what he's speaking is speaking in his holiness. Okay. Uh, Isaiah 30 verse 15. For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and, and rest you shall be saved, in quietness and confidence shall be your strength, but you would not. So when God speaks, we must recognize that it is the Holy One speaking. God speaks in his holiness. His words are holy. His words are pure. His words are truth. His words are perfect. Holy One has spoken and God cannot lie. His word is truth. John 17, 17. Uh, speak your word. Your word is truth. Cleanse them by your word, by your, for your word is truth. God is not man that he should lie in Numbers 23, 19. Um, so these are all a, a very fundamental truth that has to be solid in our hearts. Like, you know, our basics has to be super solid. We know that God is not man that he should lie. Uh, and he, because when he speaks, he speaks in his holiness, right? In his holiness, he has spoken. And everything around him is holy. Uh, angels uh, is considered as holy angels, right? Um, so Matthew 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. Um, Daniel chapter 4, 13, 17, 23, you can read. Um, I saw the visions of my head while on my bed, and there was a watcher, a holy one, coming down from heaven. It's referring to an angel. Okay? This decision is by the decree of the watchers and the sentence by the word of holy ones in order that the living may know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men. Uh, finally, in Daniel 8, 13, then I heard a holy one speaking. So you notice a difference in the article that is used. It does not say the holy one. It says a holy one. <laughs> then I heard a holy one speaking. And another holy one said, to that certain one who was speaking. So he's surrounded by a host of angels and heavenly beings, uh, ones who are called holy and um, holy angels. Uh, everything about him, where he, he dwells, he adorns, uh, is holy, right? Um, holiness adorns his house. Uh, it says in Psalm 93 verse 5, your testimonies are very sure. Holiness adorns your house, O Lord, forever. What does that mean, adorns? Yeah, decorate. Okay, make it look beautiful or attractive. Right? Make it look beautiful or attractive or decorate. It's a, it's a nice word. So he's saying holiness adorns your house. Holiness is uh, is a thing that is used to decorate your house. Right? Uh, do you like to decorate your house? Yeah. You know, that's one, um, when, I, when I was newly married, there's one statement my wife kept using. Like, I want to make up the house. I want to do up the house. I want to do up the house. You know, and till then I was just a simple minimalistic guy, bachelor. For me, if one room is there, one bed is there, one fan is there, one tube light is there, that is enough. <laughs> what is what? What do you mean you want to do up the house? You know. So what you meant was like I want to decorate it, make it look nice. <laughs> she wanted to adorn the house. You know. Uh, there's another friend of mine, friends, I should say would like to adorn, uh, decorate their house with plants. Almost looks like a jungle. You know, the point, <laughs> so some of them like to live in the jungle, and there are those who like to bring jungle inside the house. 
<laughs> right? So that way, the scripture says, holiness adorns your house. I mean, how many more scriptures do we need to read about his holiness and that he is holy? <laughs> it's, you know, his name is holy. Who he is is holy. Holiness adorns his house. Uh, you know, the creatures that he's made, uh, you know, are referred to as the holy angels. Um, and in scripture, it goes on to say that, you know, where he dwells, if it's a mountain that he is on, it's no longer just a mountain. It's a holy mountain. Right? If it's a temple or a sanctuary, it's not just a sanctuary anymore. It's a holy sanctuary. It's a holy temple, a holy throne, a holy habitation. And all of the scriptures are mentioned in, in the scripture. So, uh, and the, in the Old Testament, it was a more of a physical place, a tangible place. But in the New Covenant, you and I are called as the temple of the living God. And so the thing is, because he is holy, Right? He, want to, he wants to embrace us with his holiness. He wants to see that um, his holiness made in us, isn't it? And so, uh, and that, and as it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Right? The Spirit of God dwells in you. And so, uh, for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are? Uh, we are encouraged to live a life of holiness uh, because he is holy and where he dwells ought to be holy. Right? What adorns your house? It's a question for you. What adorns your house? I'm also talking about the inner heart. <laughs> in the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant, Testament, uh, the holiness was more of an outward expression. Like you had to do a certain things and you'd be, you know, you'd be labeled holy. Um, but not as much in the New Covenant, New Testament. Right? In the Old Testament, a person, a man had to commit an action of adultery for him to be labeled as an adulterer. But Jesus comes and increases the standard. So, right? Um, so holiness adorns his house. Uh, does holiness adorn your house? That's a question for us. And then he goes on to say that I must be regarded as holy. Uh, in Leviticus chapter 10 verse 3, And Moses said to Aaron, This is what the Lord spoke, saying, By those who come near me, I must be regarded as holy. Those who come. Okay, everybody say, Those who come near me. Right? So he's saying, I must be regarded as holy. That means, again, James chapter 4, verse 8. Draw near to me, and I will draw near to you. So how do we know, draw near to him? We regard him as holy. Right? With that recognition, with that uh, understanding, and acknowledging that you are holy, we draw near to him. And so when we draw near to him with that understanding, with that revelation, and when we acknowledge that, he draws near to us. Otherwise, draw near to me. What do you want? To board, no? <laughs> in Isaiah 5 verse 16, But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment, and God who is holy shall be hallowed in righteousness. Um, we can read all the scriptures, and I think we should. Uh, Isaiah 8 verse 13, The Lord of hosts, him you shall hallow, let him be your fear. Let him be your dread. In that day, a man will look to his maker and his eyes will have respect for the Holy One of Israel. And finally, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28 and 29. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and Godly fear. Okay, so giving reverence to God and holding Him uh, in a high estate is not just in the Old Testament, but it is all in the, also in the New Testament, as it's mentioned in Hebrews twelve. When we serve Him, right, we serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. With reverence and godly fear, and so that means we are 
getting close to him, we regard him as holy. Right? In the Old Testament, in the tabernacle of Moses, every small thing, like a utensil, bowl, table, uh, everything was labeled as uh, holy unto the Lord. Everything. Uh, in the next section or in the next chapters, we see that the, even the holy, uh, the high priest, right, everything he was wearing had that inscription, holy unto the Lord. Like a, like a thing around his head, whatever that is. Um, not a bandana. <laughs> it had holy unto the Lord. It's just to say that you are set apart unto the Lord. We are not set apart for the sake of being set apart. Right? We are, you are not just set apart for the sake of being set apart. You are set apart unto God. Okay? Um, another thing that makes us holy is atonement. So how do we approach such a holy God? We've established that he is holy. Uh, that is terrifying from the scriptures that we've read in Isaiah, Revelation, and Ezekiel. Yes, he is our father, but he is our father who is in heaven. Where he dwells is holy. Right? Everything about him is holy. His name is holy. Holiness adorns his house. He wants his name, uh, he wants us to regard him as holy. And so we've established all of that. But the point here is that he wants a relationship. Right? How do we get close to this holy God? In the Old Testament, again, uh, there was a day of atonement. Once a year, the high priest would go into the tabernacle and the holy place. He would pour the blood of the lamb over the mercy seat. That was for the forgiveness for the nations of uh, sins of the nation of Israel. Right? Uh, it's mentioned here. Look at Leviticus chapter 14, verse 19 to 20. Um, stay with me, guys. It's, it is a very important section, and we'll finish a little soon. Yeah, just give me 10 more minutes, okay? In First Timothy chapter 6, verse 16, it says, God dwells in, appro in unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see. Our best works will still not make you fit to enter into his presence. You can do all the good deeds you want to do. It will not save you. You can fast and pray how much ever you want and without his relationship. Isaiah 64 verse 6 says, Our righteousness is like filthy rags. Our righteousness is like filthy. In Leviticus 14, 19 to 20, it says, Then the priest shall offer the sin offering and make atonement for him who is to be cleansed. Okay, uh, highlight that Hebrew word, the taher. Okay, that's what, that's the Hebrew word for cleansed is from his uncleanness. So, now if I'm a sinner, in the Old Testament I committed sin, I come to the high priest Anand and say, please make atonement for me. So, he will do the necessary things, rituals, whatever, you know, sacrifice and you know, make an atonement on my behalf. That's another thing of a high priest is that he was doing, he is like a bridge between divinity and humanity. Right? And so, once he makes the atonement, I will be labeled as clean now. Are you with me? That's what had to be done for any individual to approach God, this holy God. And so uh, the Hebrew word Tahir means to be bright. Interesting, isn't it? To be bright. Uh, by implication, it meant to be clean, pure, physically sound, clear, unadulterated, uncontaminated, morally innocent or holy. To be cleansed, purge, purify. Or words. That's what being cleansed is. Okay. Um, so fast forward, we come down to Romans chapter 5, verse 10 and 11. Romans chapter 5, verse 10 and 11. We see that 
For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. So uh, the word reconciled right, in the KJV is the same word for atonement. Okay, reconciled or reconciled. Let, 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 let me come and make a reconciliation. Okay, there's something wrong between Anand and Prince. I'm going to step in and make a, a reconciliation on their behalf. You with me? And that is exactly what Jesus did. Right? He made it possible. He tore the veil. Right? The veil was torn from top to bottom, not from bottom to top. If it was torn from bottom to top, it would have implied that a man tore it. The detail is there in the text. It says it was torn from top to bottom. Right? Jesus made a way. And you know, if you know, if you know again in the tabernacle of Moses in the holy place, you enter on the right side is the table of showbread, right? And so, but if you look at it from the Ark of the Covenant perspective, the table of showbread will be the left, isn't it? From if you're coming from the inside out, right? It's it's as if God saying that the veil tore. No, I'm going to leave my throne, and then Jesus coming and breaking bread with his people, having fellowship. Are you are you with me? So he made a way so that you and I can have fellowship, which was once lost in the garden. So yeah, this, this is beautiful because he's given us access to his holiness um, by his blood. As it says in Romans 5, verse 10 and 11. And let's read some more. Uh, in Romans, sorry, Hebrews chapter, I want to read 9 and 12, 9 verse 12. I'll just read for us. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 12 says, Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood. He entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. That is Hebrews chapter 9 verse 12. Not with the blood of the goat or calves, but with his own blood. And now look at uh, Hebrews 10, 19 to 22. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Okay, enter his throne. Boldly enter his throne. But verse 20 says, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is, that is his flesh and having a high priest over the house of God. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. So the scripture says, it doesn't just say come. It, or it doesn't just say enter the holy place. It says boldly enter. Why? What is it talking about? It's addressing the attitude or in the manner that you can enter. I can say, okay, hey, Alan, come home. And say, and then I can go on to say, make yourself at home. Isn't it? It's a big thing. I'm not going to say that to everybody. Right? I will say that to someone I will consider as my own kin, my own brother, my sister, my my close relation or friend whom I trust with my life or something, you know, I say, hey, come in. Please make yourself at home. Uh, feel, please feel free to open the fridge. Uh, and, you know, you're not going to walk into someone else's house and go open their fridge and start taking stuff off. It's, it's not the right etiquette, isn't it? <laughs> but why I'm, I'm using all of that example is to say that God is saying, don't just enter, enter boldly. Because I have made a way. I have made a way, yeah. See, most of the times, you know, as Christians, we understand that we have been forgiven. Do you believe that? We've been forgiven of our sins, yes or no? But we hardly take into consideration what we have been given. We just, we celebrate the first part, which is absolutely fine, because we've been forgiven of our sins. We've forgiven, but we've also been given his righteousness.
they were made, right? And so, uh, and that's why he says, you know, once we declare that Jesus is our Lord and Savior, he becomes our righteousness. And so when God, when God, he looks at us, he looks us through the lens of Jesus, through the righteousness of Jesus, because he wraps us now. Yes, Second Corinthians 5, 21, he says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. That's what we've been given. Amen. Um, so it's chapter two, uh, let's just do a quick run through of it. Um, he is the Holy One of Israel. Right? He is the Holy One of Israel. Uh, he's thrice holy. Um, and we see that his throne room is surrounded with worship like that. Um, is your worship filled with that understanding and recognition, recognition of who he is? His name is holy. Do you regard his name as holy? Right. Holiness adorns his house. What adorns your house? God has spoken in his holiness. Um, everything that he fills, he touches, becomes holy. He must be regarded as holy. Finally, he's not just stayed you know, where he is as holy. He has made a way for us. Right? He made an atonement. He reconciled by sending us his only begotten son. Right? Second Samuel chapter 22, verse 36, it says, He stooped down to make me great. Right? Second Samuel 22, 36. He stooped down. He came down to our level to make me great. You know, there was a time that I had to speak in a, in a college for students uh, during Christmas time. And... Uh, from, from the same verse, Second Samuel 22, 36. But just for us to understand that, I'll give you that example. It, it's a little, uh, it's not an example that I would give with, to the Bible college students, but, um, but just bear with me, okay? It's, it, I think it's a fun question. Um, can a bird and a fish fall in love? For argument's sake, just for argument's sake, okay? Let's just say, they do. Where will they live? Will a bird go live? Can a bird go live under the water? Or can a fish come out of the water and live with a bird? This is just an example, right? So, and that's how, although he loved us so much, God the Father, that because of his holiness, he could not come down. And so he made way through his son so that he would stoop down and get into the mess and the rut with us. And when he rose again, he just didn't go up. He took us with him. Right. And so he has made atonement, reconciliation, so that we can boldly enter his throne. Yeah. Um, so I think that's enough for today. Uh, we we'll kind of pause here. There's been too much content or data. 2236. Second Samuel chapter 22 verse 36. I think it's there in Psalm 18 also. Psalm, the same thing. It's Psalm 18. I forget which verse. Okay. Uh, well, we'll pause here for today. I hope you all are doing well otherwise. Okay. Do you have any other questions or any thoughts you want to share? Or anything, anything that you took away from today's class that you want to share? Like what? From everything that we've learned today, what was that one point or two points that stood out? Uh, just so uh, just so I know that you took away something from this class. Type it if you want to. Or I'm going to speak as well.
Yes, ma'am. Are you able to hear me? Um, sure, go ahead. Yeah, uh, or, or uh, is it better I text? No, just go ahead. Yeah, okay. Uh, one of the things that uh, uh, when you mentioned about the Lord's Prayer, uh, uh, the, the second line about hallowed be your name. Um, I mean, when we pray, I mean, of course, we know that it's a pattern that's been given to us. So are we affirming that, uh, yes, your name is holy? Or are we also praying and uh, asking that his name would be revered? Uh, through us as well. Can we say that also? I mean, that people need to know that he is a holy God uh, because of our lives as well. Can we say that too? Thank you. Um, uh, yes, it, it works both ways, but uh, mainly, primarily, it is to just declare that he is holy. So that's what it is. But when we do that, when we declare uh, it is we are also proclaiming that he is holy and so what happens when we proclaim is that people around us witness uh, about who he is so it works both ways you can say that it's like the psalm that says uh, he's put a new song in my mouth and a hymn of praise to our god um, so he's put a new song in my mouth a hymn of praise to our god and when I sing that, it goes on to say, many will see and fear and put their trust in him. And so when we declare, when we sing, when we praise, when we worship, when we proclaim, uh, many will see and fear and put their trust in him. And so when we praise, when we when we say the obvious, right, that we, let your name be hallowed, your name is hallowed, uh, we are declaring and we are also proclaiming. Thank you. has said everything about God is holy, his wisdom, his grace, his nature is holy, undergirded in his truth. So, yeah, thank you. Anything else, guys? What, Prince? Mike is close to you. No. Uh, I don't know, like, uh, fully keep it in words and say, but, uh, one thing was so uh, uh, wrecking me or like touching me so much is like most of the times we uh, tie holiness to certain thing like this is the standard for holiness and most of the times we feel like uh, to describe God or to uh, we think like the description like the word holy is his description but when we see all this and the certain statements when people make it's not like no, holiness is not the description for God, but God is the description for holiness. And which means like his righteousness is so much may, uh, like way more. And especially when we are seeing that God has given us his righteousness to us. And uh, we are also looking that part like boldly enter into his presence. And we said like we only emphasize on the first part that we are sinners, but we don't did not recognize the greatness of the righteousness that he has given us. And I was thinking of it and actually it is making me like. Mm. Uh, and uh, most of the time, one more thing, we are, have also seen how the heaven presence is like even the the angels who are so holy, even they tremble, they can't having many eyes. They can't even able to see God, but most of the times we be so casual with him when he is inside of us, but still he is pairing us. And that was.
Anybody else guess before we hear? Mm, uh, when we go through it, when we see how great and awesome this holiness to this level, uh, I never understood actually. So, and he's calling us to be holy to that, uh, and he's helping us. Um, and holy means not just, okay, you're not doing this, that. It's not like that. He's holy, and now he's living inside of us or each one of us. How much more we have to be carry his presence with reverence and I love the fact that easily you can come boldly to his throne room come now and that uh, actually I think we and I have to re I can't just leave it like this you have to think about it again and again to get into that Uh, I was just, uh, I was just, see, all the verses were actually poking. Like, I was just reading and I was just searching for the another uh, translations also. Each, each and every verse when you are telling. Uh, when when we are speaking about His Holiness, it, it was like, I, I, I just touched at this atonement, like how, how He did this atonement for us. And, uh, and he, he, he made a way for us. And and when you said this, like uh, like he's he's telling us to to come and to to enter into his kingdom like very boldly. It's it's not like it's something. It's it's not mine or it's not someone else. It's yours, and you can enter into the kingdom with boldness and all. Uh, when we are when we are, uh, I mean, when, in this Hebrew word uh, tahir also it was to be bright by implication. It means clean, pure, physically sound, clear, and that. When we when we think about this, like how Prince was when Prince shared, when we when we think about this holiness, we will we will describe him like that. But God Himself is is holy. We we couldn't even uh, imagine also how holy He is, and He made He made an atonement and He made a way for us to the center. That's so we have to carry this each and every time, not only just in words. But in our lives, uh, oh, I also like one thing. Like uh, I was not there first class, but uh, as you taught in this chapter, so really, uh, uh, one thing it uh, touched my heart. So like uh, when we see in these days, uh, just we are taking simply in His presence, like. Just simply, we are thinking his presence, taking simple ways. But when we see, as you taught, Old Testament, the tabernacle of Moses, there is two pre, uh, you, uh, priests used to there. One is priest, uh, priest only. One is high priest. So when uh, someone did something, so priest will go only the holy place, and the high priest will go most holy place, where God used to stay. But when we see. God made the way for us to enter His presence after Jesus Christ, so we can meet anywhere so as we want. He made that way, like which we lost that as you taught that relationship with God. So through Jesus Christ, He made again so we can have relationship with God. Really, it's amazing. Like the way the old uh, Old Testament people, they cannot enter that place. And now, through Jesus Christ, through His blood, we can have relationship with God. And you gave that uh, uh, example, like word and uh, uh, fish. That is very nice word. Really. So it's touched my heart. Yeah. Yeah.